this episode, we're going to go over two methods of making normal mapping look more realistic. In uh, episode two, we talked about uh, our PBR material that we built here, our cobblestones material, and it has a base texture, a uh, normal map, and then this texture, which is a combination of specular roughness and ambient occlusion. Uh, and it also has metalness that we're not using. And that looks pretty good. Uh, we get a pretty good, uh, a pretty nice looking uh, cobblestones material. But there are a couple of things that we can do to make our normal maps look more interesting. For right now, what I'm going to do is hook up this gray color instead of our texture sample, just so it makes the bumps of the normal map more obvious. And you'll see what I mean here. Um, now that there's no color going into base color, the normal map bumps uh, stick out a little bit better and it's a little more obvious what we're looking at. Okay, so the first technique that we're going to be going over is called offset mapping. And over here on the left side of my graph, I have a node called bump offset. And what this does is it modifies the UV coordinates that I'm going to use to look up my base color, my uh, masks, and my normal map. And it modifies the UVs based on the height off of the surface. And let me show you what I mean by that. So this texture is called a height map. And wherever the texture is black, it means that you're really low on the texture and wherever it's white, it means you're high. So if we come over here and take a look at what this texture looks like, the first thing that you're gonna notice is that it's extremely low resolution. Uh, my texture is actually just 256 by 256. And when we zoom in this close, you can start to see it, it sort of falling apart because of how low res it is. Um, but I wanted to show you this because uh, you don't need a very high res texture to get really good looking results. In fact, you get better results if your texture is low res and kind of blurry like this. Um, I have a version of this height map that's a 2K texture and it's really sharp, um, but I found that I was getting uh, not as good results uh, with these techniques and so I actually decreased it to 256 by 256 and blurred it out a bit in Photoshop. Okay, so this is what you need. You need a height map, and I created this height map in 3ds Max by rendering my high-res geometry where the pixels closest to the camera were white and the pixels furthest from the camera are black. And then I brought that texture sample into my shader, and I plugged it into the height socket of bump offset. And now if I plug the UVs from my bump offset into my three textures here. Let's take a look at what happens. All right, so we have to get in kind of close here to to see the result, but I hope that you can notice that there's a little bit of parallax movement as I move the camera around and that the the cobblestones no longer look like they're flat on the surface. Um, What's happening is that my texture coordinates are being shifted according to my view angle. So as I look at the model more like this, from a shallow view angle, it shifts things around to make it look like the bumps are actually popping out and not just staying stuck right on the, right on the surface. So let's go back to the way it was again, and let's see if we can get a good idea of what this is actually doing. So here you can see that my normal map looks kind of flat, but then again when I apply the bump offset technique, it's gonna look just a little bit more, um, a little bit more bumpy. And I can control the amount of the effect that's being applied with this value here called height ratio. Right now it's set to 0 0.05. I'm just gonna set it to a value of one and go crazy. This is gonna be extremely too high, um, but at least you'll be able to tell uh, that it's definitely 
doing the effect. Can you see how like when I move the camera around, it is parallaxing the surface so that areas where my height map is white are moving away from me and areas where my heart where my height map is black are moving toward me depending on the way that I rotate it. Now obviously you're not going to use this uh, with a value of 1 so let's tone this down a little bit. I'm going to do uh, 0 0.07. This is just a little bit stronger. So you can see now as I move it around there's a little bit of parallax movement between the tops of the cobblestones and the bottoms of the cobblestones. This is pretty cool and you can see that I'm only getting 107 instructions so it's fairly cheap. If I go back to the original shader, if I just break these connections really fast, you can see that my original shader is 99 instructions and with the bump offset mapping it's going to be 107 instructions so not too bad. Um, this is this is an effect that you could probably use uh, on most platforms, but there is a, a little bit of a weakness. As I get down here to kind of a glancing angle, you can see in some places, like right here for example, that the effect sort of starts to pull itself apart. This is one of the reasons that I wanted to use uh, a height map that was blurred, so there wouldn't be any sharp uh, angles where it went directly from white to black. Uh, because that really accentuates the the areas where it breaks down. Okay, so that's the first technique. It's fairly cheap and you can use it just about anywhere. The second te technique that I want to show in this episode is called parallax occlusion mapping. And it's significantly more expensive, um, but also uh, looks quite a bit more convincing. So here I have a node down here called parallax occlusion mapping and I have my height map set up here and plugged into the height map texture. Now there is a difference here. Let me move these nodes up so that we can look at them together. So here you can see I have my height map plugged into a texture sample and here I have my height map plugged into a texture object. And the difference between these two is that this node just lets me tell it what texture I want to use. It doesn't actually sample it. And then this node tells me what texture I want to use and it samples it. My texture sampling actually takes place multiple times inside my parallax occlusion mapping node. And so I want to use a texture object instead of a texture sample simply so I can specify which texture is going to be sampled and then the sampling is going to take place multiple times inside this parallax occlusion mapping node. Whereas with my bump offset technique, I'm only sampling my height map once. Okay, so with parallax occlusion mapping, it's actually doing ray tracing through my scene and figuring out where the ray hits my object and uh, doing multiple ray samples to figure out the best shape of the surface. So let me plug in the UVs of my parala uh, parallax occlusion mapping and we'll take a look at what that looks like. This is the most realistic looking result, but it's also the most expensive technique out of these two. And you'll see what I mean here in a second. So here you can see that the bumps in my cobblestones stay bumpy looking even when I'm looking at them at a at a really sharp glancing angle and if I zoom in here you can see that there's this really nice bumpy effect if I get close enough you can sometimes see that the the effect kind of pulls itself apart into like pancake layers um, but it's not doing it too bad here yeah, you can kind of see it here. Can you see these striations along the rocks? So that's what happens if you get a little bit too close to the surface, and that's really the only weakness of, the, of this technique. But you can see that... Uh, oh, one thing that I didn't mention here is there is this setting called min steps and max steps. And what that is, is it's the number of rays that the shader is casting to be able to create the effect. 
and that's what determines how many steps or striations you see here so if your effect is falling apart you can always increase this and if this is not super obvious you can decrease it so let's go ahead and do that now and I'll show you what it looks like with some different settings so I'm gonna add a constant node so and then then for min steps let's just set min steps to 2 and then duplicate this and I'm gonna set max steps to 4 and what I want to show you here is what it looks like if you're using too few samples so there you go you can see that it's kind of like the offset mapping where it's just sort of falling apart at these angles so if I increase this the default max steps is 30 uh, so let's set this to something like 16 and there you can see it's a little bit better but it's still kind of falling apart around the edges so let's set it up to 30 again Right, so that looks pretty nice. So if I look at it straight down, it's only going to be doing two samples. And then the steeper my angle gets, the more samples it's going to do. Now the more samples it does, the more expensive it's going to get. But generally, it's, uh, it's pretty affordable if you, have, if you have a fairly strong system. What you could do is is use bump offset mapping for weaker systems and then for stronger systems or higher end platforms use parallax occlusion mapping it looks really nice and it holds up pretty well even at glancing angles whereas bump offset mapping kind of falls apart at glancing angles i just want to plug back in my rgb color here so we can take a look at it So you can see that this really convincingly looks like the surface has geometrical bumps uh, when in reality it's just a completely flat plane. And it's a pretty powerful technique to, to be able to add additional detail to your surface that's not actually there. And all you need to do uh, in addition to regular normal mapping is just provide a height map. Just a couple more things. Uh, I already talked about this value here, which is the height or how high off the surface it's pumping. I'm just going to increase this to 0.1 so that it becomes extremely obvious. And then I have these two values here, min steps and max steps. Uh, and that's the number of uh, ray trace samples that we're doing. Uh, here, now that I've increased the height ratio, you can see that uh, with a limited number of steps the effect kind of pulls itself apart so the the higher you make your height ratio the more samples you have to give it in order for it to hold itself together and then lastly uh, this is the last required setting is this height map channel and that's which channel of this texture to use as the height map so since my texture is just a grayscale image it doesn't matter which channel and I'm just telling it I'm giving it one zero 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 which basically means just take the take your height information from the red channel of the height map okay well that's pretty much it in this video we went over bump offset mapping and parallax occlusion mapping both really cool techniques for giving your normal mapping more depth uh, and uh, allowing your surfaces to look more convincing as uh, bumpy surfaces when they're actually just flat. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you subscribe. And if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to help you out. Thanks a lot.